we can't get out, right? That's the main that's the main thing, is we can't leave through the front door. Front door doesn't open, Deadbolt holds the door in place in its upper left corner. Yeah. Uh no, not that way. <laughs> I got stabbed. Okay. So we have a puzzle we can solve in the basement. So we need to go down and do that as soon as the power goes out. Hi, Pete. We haven't actually met Pete yet, have we? I know that look on your face. You've been trying to... T you've been tying yourself in knots, running this night through your head over and over again, trying to think of a way out. You see the house with its door locked and power out. Some kind of walking metaphor roaming its halls. You see me in the woods with my throat slit. Do I see that? Have I seen that? Am I right about that last part? Mm. No, you just flaked on us. No. I don't blame you for thinking that. That mind game on the computer in the bedroom reminds me of the computers in elementary school. We were supposed to use them for class projects, but all we ever did was go hunting in Oregon Trail. Correct. If you need help with the mind game, you could probably ask Megan about it. Well, true. She's the gamer. That's all I have for now. See you again soon. So Pete never showed up. Pete was supposed to show up to the house last night and just never showed up. Uh, and I didn't... I thought it, but I didn't say it. I was like, it's because he's dead, right? It's it's because he's dead. Yeah, the mind game is important, totally. Um, and we want to go ask Megan about it. We need... A pro gamer. I want to scream. Sorry, I'm late. Yep. What's up? Uh, I want to cry when I look at them, but I guess I'll just talk about the weather or whatever. <laughs> it's nothing. I have a memory of something strange happening. Same response. There's a lock on the door. Do you know why? Did you try unlocking it? Lock seems like it needs power to unlock. So trapped inside until we can figure the lock out? Okay, no reason to panic. I'm sure it's fine. So that's an unlicensed game. Clone cartridges like this were popular in countries where the major consoles didn't get distributed or were too expensive. A lot of people had no way of knowing there were any other option. The bootlegs were the only choice. Or clone consoles too, yeah. Chinese and Eastern European companies pump them out. Brands like Micro Genius, Subor, Dendi. Um, These things really flew under the radar, and in the U.S. they're mostly remembered as a funny, shitty curio. There are people like me who are just as interested in collecting them. For preservation's sake? That's part of it. I like to think I'm helping preserve the history of these games. Retro collecting is usually pred predicated on nostalgia, like recapturing the feeling of your childhood and getting back the things you've lost over time. Truth is, I didn't like my childhood. I'm glad most of that stuff is gone. You live vicariously through other people's shit. I mean, not shit exactly, but yeah. The only things I'm nostalgic for are the are things I didn't actually have, things that I wanted but never got to touch, or things I never knew existed, like this copy of Purd Mystery. I'm excited to be able to play it while I'm here. Where did that come from? Purd Mystery was just here waiting for me when I got here. You can play it too. Go ahead and give it a try. I have, thank you. Video games really brought us together, didn't they? Games get a bad rap for being an isolating and depressing thing, <laughs> but I owe a lot of good stuff in my life to them. Stuff like my friendship with you. Aw. That doesn't make me... That doesn't stop me feeling like I'm a fucking dork sometimes, but you know. Dorks. <laughs> I knew Megan was my favorite. I'm a shut-in and I don't even play games. Do 
Don't tear yourself down to build me up, Emily. I really admire everything you do. Aw. Fear of death around every corner of those games really stressed me out. The fact that anyone could manage with only one save file is unbelievable to me. Yeah. Old school gaming is brutal. I could never jump like jump like wild from genre to genre, game to game like you could. I want to get her to talk about Minesweeper. Uh I tended to get obsessed with one game at a time. It makes me realize I was probably dealing with OCD even before I even knew. I feel you. I remember one time I spent m more time in a week in Morrowind than I did in my actual life. Just falling asleep and waking up and going back to Balmar or Dragonius or whatever. Mm hmm. Uh, that was one of the first times I remember lucidly realizing I was depressed. Maybe games are bad. Feel very understood right now. <laughs> Good. Okay. I continue to like Megan, but that didn't really help with the puzzle, did it? Um. But yes, the Minesweeper game. Clearly significant. No, that's the bathroom. Uh. Who's down here, right? We've been in there. There's... Have we been in here? One of these is our room. No. Yeah, here we go. Um... So there's probably one here. There's got to be one here because of this one. There's got to be one here. Which means those are the two. So here and here. And then there's one here and one... All three of these. So there's one here. So not one here. And not one here. Or no, okay, so that's one of the three. Uh, um. <laughs> there has to be one here. And here. Yeah! I did it! You win! Hooray! What does that give me? Is the pattern significant? It was different every time. One panel. Locker. It's like Minesweeper. So the solution is going to be significant. Downstairs. This was a 4x4. Four four. Hmm. Okay, well we solved it. I assume that solution is going to be used somewhere. 12! Next to the keypad diagram, there's a sticky note. All that's, on, all that's on it is a number written in thin, open block letters. I can't take it or anything. Uh, flyer, flyer for an electronic lock. Right, right, right. Read the note. Someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a power supply. Oh, we can hide in here. That's good to know. And what's this? Pamphlet. A safe kid's guide to logging online. Always ask for parents permission before surfing the web. Don't give anyone your personal information, like what school you go to or your birthday. If you see something that makes you feel funny, tell a trusted adult right away. Never agree to meet someone you met on the internet in real life. Ever. <laughs> Very bad things can happen to you. Game is making you feel weird? Yeah, this is a weird game. Um, ask yourself, can you ever really know a person? Would you even want to? If you wouldn't say, if you wouldn't say it in front of grandma, don't say it online. That's a good rule. 
Don't open emails or IMs from strangers. They could have viruses, bad pictures, or could just be trying to play a mean trick on you. Don't risk it. Huh. Um, I'm curious about this closet. Weird. I mean, not weird, but... Um, and then there's this. I think he's in the walls. I think he's just roaming around the walls and we can hear him every once in a while. I wonder if he's on like a set path or something. And what... One of these is supposed to be the room that we're staying in. But it's not this one. This isn't ours. What's through here? Yeah, like, I, you can hear him. Let me go back. I mean, I know there's other people in the house walking around, but... They don't sound all creepy. Hmm. Nope. Oh, yes. So what is going on here? Great question. Uh, we are Emily. We arrived at this house. This is um, like an Airbnb situation. We're reuniting with our friends. Um, but as we've been here, chilling with our friends and getting to know each other, uh, the power goes out at 9.15. And then at around 10.30, some 10.30 to 11, a creepy guy pops out and kills us all. And then it resets. And when we try to talk to people about what's happening, do you remember something messed up just now? I mean, we can say that, but uh, like I had this weird dream of something happening. Uh, we've talked about this. You don't. Re so if I click, you don't remember us all getting murdered, but then our character says, yeah, I do. We were driving around southwards in the mountains following signs for Rustic Old Family Fun Center. And they start and they recount a story. And like... I cannot tell people about the things that have happened in the previous time loops. My character seems to... know about them and not be able to speak about them. Um, and then the, the main thing is that this door is locked. Front door's locked. We can't get in. We can't get out. Um, locking mechanism doesn't have power. And there's all these power cables going all around the house. Um, but now that the now that the power is out, the door to the basement is open, because it's not otherwise. This is where we were when, <laughs> when you popped up the first time. Uh, there's all these devices in here. We're finding... Oh, here we go. So do I just need to replicate my... Probably the three mines, right? Like that. Okay, cool. Check power box. Okay. Yes. Okay, not sure what that did. One of these... So all the power cords are color-coded. Oh, and there's this. We, we we can do this too. We were... I think we were close on this one. We want the bottom one to be yellow. Probably opens up the garage. Hmm. Uh... Where was our... Yeah, two middle ones need to be red. Is 
so I need to go mm. there we go enter so the aim is to stop it from happening I think so I think I mean the aim is to be able to get out of the house pretty sure Examine schematic. Ooh, some kind of electronics diagrammed and attached is a small note with a three-digit number, 278. Must be the combination to get into the cellar. Now I'll be able to get down here before the power goes out. Cool. We opened up a shortcut. Excellent. Read note. An invoice for the delivery of two industrial-grade Galneron generators to the house. Attached is a handwritten note. Parker, Parker is the house owner. We've known from, from other notes. Um, and Claire is a person who's also here, there, was here, question mark. Uh, I thought your accumulator was an acoustic device. Why are we suddenly looking to generate more power than we could use in a year? Hmm. Inspect pamphlet. Radon. The silent killer. Silent no longer, odorless, colorless, deadly. Radon may have even infiltrated your home already. The most dangerous thing you can't see, hear, taste, or smell. Did you know thousands die from radon exposure every year? Radon comes from the natural breakdown of uranium found in the soil your home is built on and the water you drink. Radon is the number one cause of lung cancer, asterisk, in non-smokers. <laughs> radon attaches itself to dust particles in the air. The amount of radiation in four... I actually don't, I don't know what that measurement's going to be. I don't know what CI is. Per, per liter? Uh, is equal to 100 chest x-rays. The symptoms of radon poisoning will not appear until you have lung cancer or about to see, or about to see a doctor immediately. Also, I'm hearing sounds. Read plaque. Uh, of hollowed tubes and animal spirits. Clara Jones. Yeah, Clara. Hydraulic cylinders, oil, human blood. And she was, a, she was an artist. The body is a machine. The body is a house. The same blood, the same thoughts. Recycled, gushing, cellar to attic, atrium to ventricle. There is beauty to the well-oiled symphony of it. The furnaces of the heart, the electric grid of the nerve endings, lungs stuffed with asbestos, the organs swelling proudly against the floorboards. The crawl space is littered with corpses of animals and the bodies of men. The lights are on. There's nobody home. But a body gets sick. Wood rots. Machines rust. Houses melt into something worse. Nature abhors a vacuum and will punish you for creating one. You will suffer the relentless function of your own decay. A body made to live, a machine built to die. Oh, I like Clara's style. She got wrapped up in something nasty, but I like her style. Uh, also, we're in danger now, I think. I don't know what time the stuff actually... I don't know when he actually pops out. But we saw him pop out upstairs. Like, okay, so we, we flipped a power thing. Did this change the front door at all? It's gonna be like right here, isn't he? Open the door. Let's leave. Front door is locked. Doesn't have power. Yellow cable into the living room. Oh, that's right. There was another power box in here. Megan. Oh, it's open. This wasn't open before. Oh, God. Huh? Oh, jeez. Oh, no. I... We don't have time to do this. Hi, Megan. Emily, I saw something in the house, something in that, something that looked human. It had a knife, Emily. It's coming for us. Yeah, I know. The creature is in front of my dialogue options again. Hi. Fine. I've been trying to tell you this whole time. 
That fucking thing keeps killing us over and over again. Every time I try to escape, it just never works out. I need your help. Please listen to me. Oh no! We've got to get out of here! Yeah. Ugh. We can do this, Emily. We just have to figure out the front door somehow. Yeah. That is the important part. Oh, Jesus, Cliff. <laughs> Cliff! Emily! Are you still being weird? What is that awful sound? I don't know. I don't know. I knew we couldn't trust this place. We gotta get out of here. Do you have anything else to help? You know about the power outage. The lightning strike hit a transformer outside, but it's barely even on fire. <laughs> it's barely even on fire. All we need to do is reset the breaker and its base and its basic as hell to fix. Okay. Problem is the breaker box is usually close to ground, which would put it in the cellar, and the cellar is locked. Well, no, it's not actually. I want to give us access, so we need to figure out how to unlock cellar door. Saw a red light coming from the cellar. The door's open. Yeah, I've been down there already. Saw a red light coming from it. Guess it opens automatically when power's off. Okay, so that's the... There was a note talking about the thing that opens automatically when power's off. That changes everything. If it's an electromechanical lock, it should have a fail-safe mode for when power's off. So the homeowner does trust us. No, I wouldn't go that far. What do you fancy for a house as old as this one? <laughs> yes, it's for the Airbnb. Totally not for the murder house. This thing was installed in the 80s, way before it could have anticipated renting this place out through a tiny computer in his pocket. What a time we live in. Normally these types of locks are used for fire escape doors so people don't get trapped and building owners don't get sued. Wanna head down there with me? Yeah, sure. You think you're up for it? It's pretty creepy down there. I've only been murdered down there once so far. Now, you don't seem like you're in a hurry to help me out. I will in a bit. I just have some things to take care of up here. What are you talking about? Things to figure out? Uh, okay, so... Oh, there he is! Run! They're just gonna stand there? Hide! <laughs> hmm... Something tells me we're not gonna get it figured out this loop. Is he still there? Are they, like, dead on the floor? Yep. Inspect body. I haven't actually seen one of their bodies yet. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It's Cliff, he's dead. There's a knife wound in his neck. Can't be happening. Will you find my phone? Text my the guppies neighbor. I don't want them to die because me. Oh, your phone? Uh. Okay. The power is coming up from below. Right? And then we need to make yellow turn on. The fact that we can see... Oh! Creepy. Uh, so, and I bet we need to link positive with positive. Let's go. There's a closet up here somewhere. Uh, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Nope. They got Gary. He's dead. 
What about Francine? Francine, are you still okay? Or anywhere? Oh, can I look outside? It's my car. Oh! Parker, thank you for the vials. I swear these are the last I'll need. Do remember to change your bandages because I do, do not plan on taking you to the ER again. The work will be done soon, rest assured. It is as convoluted as you feared. Oh, there's Francine. Damn this heat. I can feel it pulsing off the sand, pushing me upwards. I swear I could fly. Like I could just lift my wings and... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, there he is! <laughs> oh boy, okay. Uh oh. Well we're getting new stuff each time. Hope getting out here wasn't too much of a hassle for you guys. I don't recognize all these people. Uh that's Gary, that's Megan, that's Cliff, and that's uh the other guy. Uh, Francine, for real, the drive was fine. It would be like nothing for miles except trees, and then once every hour we'd see cows or something. At one point we stopped at one of those roadside boiled peanut stands, and we saw the guy ladle some of the hot nut water into his mouth, so we left without getting any. <laughs> Sounds to me like you saw something that made you feel funny. I should tell a trusted adult right away. Yes. Did a joke just go over my head? Oh, it's Laura. Laura was who was on the phone with us at the very beginning? In the car? Question mark? Uh, I feel like this is one of those Emily France Francinemisms that that none of us speak that language. But you guys don't know this story? So like, do you guys remember when the local arts council held that mini con in the spring? I got a booth that and was crunching like crazy to churn out little paintings and zines while also doing homework poorly. And because I'm a good friend, I offered to help set things up to make her life easier. That I wanted, uh, that and I wanted an excuse to hang out with, hang out and people watch. Emily sends me to Kinko's to pick up a box of freshly printed and very glossy, glossy, nice auto bio zines. Uh, get them, get them back to the con just in time to show for the show to get going. I was excited to see the books come out uh, because I was nervous about full bleeds and whatnot. And when I opened the box, it's not my zines. It was instead fully packaged with a variety of public safety and surprisingly Christian pamphlets, like the kind of thing you get in Dare or the ones assholes leave instead of tips. <laughs> they were chick tracked adjacent and people were already in the hall browsing. I'm panicking because the print job was expensive and I was hoping to make my money back and now I have a box of box of the shit people try and hand you at the grocery store and the booth next to us saw the whole thing and wanted to read them. And I'm standing there feeling like the biggest idiot on the planet uh, on the planet Earth for ruining my friend's show. Yeah, that does suck. Then Emily fans them out on the table, scribbles a little sign on it that says one dollar and those things start selling like hotcakes. Turns out this has, uh, it turns out disaffected stoners really love their ephemera. <laughs> yeah. Uh, those pamphlets sold better than anything I've tried to sell since. I've still got some somewhere. Ever since, little snippets of those pamphlets will just randomly pop into my head. Ran Radon might be right behind you. Don't get fried. Stay inside. These are the things we've seen. Well, the Radon one is. I don't think we've seen these other two specifically. This sounds like for lightning. That's for drinking, obviously, but we've seen the radon. Yeah, those pamphlets make obscure safety concerns feel like they're living entities coming to kill you. I remember feeling like I had, a, had to lock my doors and keep out Legionnaire's disease. <laughs> Francine, you made the best mistake possible. You saved me from having other people see cartoons of me unsuccessfully trying to convince the Krispy Kreme employees 
to let me have some of the burned up donuts that got stuck in the production line and having an inexplicable panic attack in the parking lot. No one needs to see that. But thank you again for fucking up so bad. Did they let you keep the donuts? They did not. Uh, so you really took those old brochures literally, huh? What do you mean? Right on me, it might be right behind you. Sounds like something you would say. You're always warning me about obscure shit I've never heard of. You know what? I just realized I need to go find my binoculars. I'll be right back. Hmm. So I'm wondering if this is like the previous year, like the last time they've all been together. It's messed up that they don't just let you have the donuts. <laughs> I mean, they're just going to throw them in the trash anyway. <laughs> Big regret. You doing okay in here? Yeah, I just need a second. You said that, yeah, like 14 minutes ago. Well, I told the gang I would bring those binoculars along for the trip, so I've been looking for them, and I don't think they're here. So now I'm curled up in a ball trying not to hyperventilate. Yeah. I thought you were doing great. I haven't seen you this on in a while. I think 20 minutes of on is all I can do, and I think I can only do that because Francine's wingmanning me. Wing manning me. It's embarrassing. When we met, I was all Captain Cool, helping Francine keep her shit together. I'm not like I was back then in school. I don't even recognize that person. You don't have to be perfect for them to like you. You're their friend. They already like you. Except for Cliff! Do they like me, or do they just like whoever that was? Unless you've been quietly struggling with demonic possession or something, whoever that was is still you. Look, I don't want I don't want to make you feel any more guilty about it, but I can only talk to your friends about data analysis for so long. You're fine. You're safe. They missed you. Even if they'll never forgive you for not being able to find the binoculars. Come on, I'll make tea. Oh, we haven't tried turning on the stove. What, did you need a pair of binoculars to find that pair of binoculars? Get your feet off my table. <laughs> what are you, my mom? I just don't want you ruining my table. I eat on that. Yes. Rude, Cliff. Cliff, we need to talk about that binocular joke. I'm disappointed. <laughs> Remembering how to... yeah. It's okay, Laura. Turned it off. I know. You're really worried about this. Like, you're worried about me ruining your table. Cliff, cool it. I'm just messing around. Nighty night! Um, I'll, I'll be here, uh, figuring out how to get out of this house. <laughs> Your guys' apartment is so cute. Seems like a really nice area. Thanks. We got super lucky. Lots of cool little shops nearby and a good variety of overpriced cafes. Will we even be able to see the shower out there with all the light pollution? I'll do my best. Uh, come on, it's not that bad if you go, like, a mile out of town. Anyway, the moon is just a tiny crescent tonight, barely any competi competition for the Perseids. Hot nut water guy got me thinking. That hot nut water would be pretty good. Super umami, yeah. Obviously, but not hot water guy. But hot water... Jeez. Hot nut water guy also got me thinking. I feel like travel becomes way less stressful once you just accept that things in a new place are going to be uncertain and weird instead of trying to control every last detail. Correct. Just go with the flow. Like that time we were out in the mountains and decided to follow the science for a family fun center. Yeah. And ended up in a burned down old ghost town with no sign of escape. Totally. Creaking of distant rocking chair. Un unreadable old billboards bleached by bleached white by the sun, tetanus on every surface. Gotta love that percolating sense of unknowable danger. Guys, guess what? I'm changing the subject. What are we going to get for dinner? <laughs> Could get some za. I think we can do better than za. Emily, you live here. Where should we get food? Thai place? A little dinky diner with rotating pie cases. Right around the corner is a super authentic Italian deli. Ty is good. 
Sure, yeah, let's just get pizza. Oh, come on. In that case, we'd better get going if we're gonna get Domino's before they close. Right, okay, let me do the rounds of the apartment before we leave. Emily, seriously, will you... Are you still worried about your knobs? It's not that unreasonable. An apartment next door to mine was like, I was like, I guess, a crash pad for pilots who were coming into the airport down the road. The city shut off our gas and nobody was around to turn the pilot light back on. No pilots for the pilot light? They had one job. <laughs> I'm talk taking heat for the binocular joke and you can get away with that one, right? Anyway, with the pilot light off, the room was just what the room just slowly swelled with gas. By the time the landlord finally came to shut off the valve, the apartment was so filled with gas that the windows had bowed out from the pressure. Ooh. Rare, but it happens. A gas is and gas is invisible, so I worry about that too. The thing that bothers me is like what happens if my lungs are full of gas and it ignites? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that'd be bad. Uh, my lungs getting like all burned up from the inside. Wouldn't the gas need oxygen to ignite? There's oxygen inside your lungs. Yeah. Guys, I think we should stop talking about this. Why should we? Listen, gas isn't some magic murder monster coming to kill you. You turn the knob and that's and it's off. That's it. Pete, help me out here. Yeah, Pete. Pete? Exactly. Thank you. That's what I was talking about. Pete makes a good point. Look, let me put this to rest for you, Emily. Bam! See? And did we all die in a blazing inferno? No. So you can relax now. Wow, Cliff, you're right. I'm so relaxed. Now, if you'll excuse me for a moment... So what I'm getting from this is that Emily had some stuff to deal with before the game started. 